Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was Asaph Adonai on a piano with that lovely tune. What was that song this oh, morning? Oh, what a beautiful morning. Nice, nice. It's That's perfect it. for our Monday, but it's kind of cold outside. Yes, it is kind of cold outside. And Asaph said it was smoky this morning. What? It did. It smelled like something was burning somewhere oh, really? downtown hmm. or something. There was, when I came in this morning, uh, someone across the street was working on their car, and their car was smoking. Oh, really? Could have, yeah. So it could have been that, yeah. That's not good. Well, it's Monday, and... And um, yeah, it, I have a KPAX interview later uh, today as well, so I'll be ditching out before the end of the show, so mm-hmm. um, Noah will close up and do all the nice social networking stuff as well. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah. But guess what, Scott? Well, what? I have some trending topics today, you guys. Sure. <laughs> that was a terrible lead-in. Yeah, that's awful. <laughs> I know, I'm so terrible. sorry. <laughs> but you guys, I looked up some news items, and there's some trending topics. Uh, first off we're talking about is Snapchat just invented some glasses. Snapchat came out with glasses. So you put on these glasses. No, no, you take videos. It's like first person point of view. So you put on some glasses and you like click a little button at the hinge and then it takes oh it a 10 second video from first person point of view. Hey guys, quit trying to make Google Glass work. But it didn't. Scott doesn't use Snapchat, so he doesn't know how fun it could really be. It's- yeah. It's super fun. They add gimmicky so th- stuff on there. And it's like, hey, look, you have a mustache. It's like, I just have to not shave for a while, and I can have a mustache. But since I can't grow a mustache, I like being able to have the option of having a mustache. Yeah. But you can <laughs> be long hair and Yeah, I do, I do, do that sometimes. Yes, I do. Um, another <laughs> thing is that there were a couple mall shootings over the weekend, oh. which is really sad, kind of on is. a heavier note. So there's one in Washington, and they actually killed one woman and four people, four men. Wow. Yeah. And then, but they have the shooter in custody. And then there was this one in Houston uh, before 7 a.m. this morning. But the victim's condition and the shooter's condition are not known. But I can imagine that you guys can check that out later on throughout the day as uh, their conditions become known. Yeah, yeah, it's usually like the shooter usually gets uh, put down. Yeah, yeah. It's and- usually rare for like a shooter or a... Uh, the, the perpetrator to survive these kinds of things. It's very true. On the um, website that I read it on, it said that there was lots of gunfire between the officer and the cops, and so the shooter is shot, and they did shoot him, but it's unknown if he's alive or dead. Okay. And then my last trending topic is the presidential debates are today. So today is the very first presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And that is going to be, it's in New York City. It's in New York. Yep. But they'll be airing it at the Top Hat Lounge tonight, actually, starting at 6.30. So the presidential debate goes on at 9. That's 7 o'clock our time. And that lasts for, for about an hour and a half. It'll last until 10.30. So you guys can watch it for free at the Top Hat Lounge or else in your own homes. Yep. I don't know how else you'd watch it online um but if you guys want to find out more information about the presidential debates or find something that's kind of like easy to follow along you can go to nbcnews.com and go to storyline slash presidential debates and it'll give you all the skinny on the debates and what you need to know and what you don't need to know cool. yeah so and it should if, be interesting and if you want to find out more information about wake up missoula i'll use this as a segue you can log on to wake up missoula.wix dot com slash wake up missoula so nice for me to write it out twice you can like us on our facebook page you can follow us on our twitter page at wake up missoula mcat also has a twitter page you can like us or follow us at mcat tv missoula you can like us on our facebook page and to find out more information just check us out on mcat.org so um just some mcat news over Mm -hmm. the weekend um missoula community access television shot the uh, hellgate roller girls and it was a really close match between the Hellgate Roller Girls, and I believe it was called the uh, Palouse River Rollers. Cool, nice. And I have no idea where Palouse is from. No, no, that's no, not, not, that's not cool. even all. It's like nice. it's usually uh, northwestern er- er- regions, and we usually get people from Washington State. Yeah, maybe they're from Washington. Palouse kind of sounds like a Washington name, doesn't it? It yeah. totally does. <laughs> um, so we did that. It was a really close match. Uh, Palouse uh, won, and it was like literally minutes. Oh, wow, it was literally really? seconds. It's it's always a blowout. The last two matches I've seen, it was. A blowout either Hellgate Roller Girls won or this year it was like all the home bouts that Hellgate Roller Girls won the first bout Mm -hmm. the second home bout uh, they got destroyed Mm. and then this last bout it was super close so it was a mixture of a little bit of everything it was definitely a little exciting for sure that sounds fun you know nothing's more exciting than a a full contact sport with women it's very true (laughs) Hellgate Roller Girls are really awesome and roller roller derby I think is so neat and you really have to be like takes a certain woman I feel like I don't know if I'm like tough enough to do that 
Well, you can't be too tough or you get penalized. Ah, very yeah. true. <laughs> All right. So, of course, the weather is looking a little good this week. Uh, your uh, high is going to be 78. Your low is going to be 48. It is currently 43 degrees outside. It's going to be mostly sunny throughout the whole entire week. But, of course, by Thursday, they they think that there's going to be a thunderstorm coming through. But you never know because it's towards the end of the week. And it looks like this whole week's going to be nice. So, if you guys uh, are working this week, na, 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 na. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, you guys, this week starts off homecoming so at the University of Montana they'll be doing lots of homecoming activities concluded with the parade on Saturday and so I've got one homecoming event that I know I have to talk to you guys about later in the show yes I also have uh, tales from the weekend um, I'm going to show you that actually after Meg's so I'm going to kind of like dive into that because I'm going to use uh, the Meg's video footage to get a good camera shot on my face so you guys, be prepared for that. Be prepared for my face on Just that camera that I pointed towards soon. me. Coming up pretty soon. Yeah, you'll see you it can't soon. see um, it. But uh, uh, this is uh, going on tomorrow night. I'm going to start with tomorrow night, and then I'm going to go back to tonight on, on MCAT. But tonight, um, we have Kim um, Dudick, and she's doing a human trafficking. And I think this uh, thing is especially interesting, especially in Montana, because um, it, it's it's just such a prevalent thing that's going on that people never really talk about. No one a lot has of people, any idea either. Yeah, no one knows how prevalent it is in our society, um, especially in Montana. Like with our population wise, it's still like, oh, there's human trafficking in Montana. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a big deal, especially in a, a lot of human trafficking and slave workers are happening, especially in the Bakken oil fields. They, yeah. that's where they catch most of these um, thing acts happening. Mm -hmm. So um, um, here is Kim Dudick, and this is happening tomorrow at 10:30 p.m. Um, so here's a little taste of that. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Detective Guy Baker. But before we do that, I'd like to direct your attention to your tables. You'll see chocolate on there, either in a bag or a little piece there. That's fair trade chocolate purchased at the Good Food Store. Um, and fair trade chocolate is chocolate that is uh, processed and grown in a way that human trafficking does not occur. Chocolate is one of the biggest industries for human trafficking victims, and so we thought we'd give you some chocolate that is fair trade today, so please enjoy that and think that it's made in a good way without anybody being victimized. And All right, so yeah, and you can see that tomorrow at 10.30. There's a documentary, it's called Blood Chocolate, and you guys should totally check it out. I had no idea. So um, if That's you girls really like chocolate, you're you're getting, uh, you're basically supporting human trafficking. That's Just so you guys Come know. on, Scott. Don't be so crazy. But <laughs> that's really interesting. I had no idea that was even a concept. Yeah. Hmm. It's really sad. So we're diving into some serious issues for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's been real um, serious right off the bat for you guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's a little taste of what you guys can see uh, tonight on MCAT. And when we come back, I'll have Tales from the Weekend. Uh, it's the last Tales of the Weekend, so I won't be doing it for probably until next year. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, here is um, Celtic Fest and a little bit of uh, circles of support. So um, in this stat here, this is from the two Hansen meta-analyses. Uh, as I said, one published in 98, the other in 2005. And what they found in those two large-scale studies was that in terms of actual sexual reoffending, okay, and each study will gauge that a little bit differently. All right, so welcome back, and this is Tales from the Weekend. So this story is, um, if you guys don't know what Tales of the Weekend is, is basically, I just kind of come up with a nice little story, uh, synopsis kind of story structure, and I just basically tell a nice little story. And this one is on themes of, of um, I guess it's the end of summer, and it's transition to fall, you know, change and all that stuff is a part of it, and this is, this heavily topic is change. And of course, as we come closer and closer to the end of summer <coughs> and the beginning of autumn, we like to reflect on some of the last remnants of summer, and in this episode of Tales from the Weekend, we get a nice young couple who enjoys a nice outdoor brunch. <laughs> um, meet Bryce and Jordan. They are two women who enjoy each other's company this past summer and have gotten a uh, brunch every Sunday. Um, Bryce is a shy person with a very private and 
very keeps to herself. Um, Jordan is from a large Greek family. Um, I knew uh, Asaph would like that. I just threw it <laughs> as a Greek um, who is a constant. Um, budding in has caused Jordan to move as far as she can away from them. Um, <laughs> The two um, met by chance. Um, it was the beginning of the farmer's market and when they were both reached out to grab a heirloom tomato, their hands met and it was an instant connection. I know, it's a stupid farmer's market story. <laughs> um, since then, they have been inseparable and the only constant is that brunch at the one uh, more popular spots in town, kind of like the Catalyst. Um, Unbeknown to the uh, couple, the restaurant stops serving food outdoors when autumn rears its old head. Um, for Bryce, she's never been in a relationship, so she's worried that any break in tradition will send their re relationship spiraling out of control. Um, Bryce talks with Jordan about how it sucks that the restaurant is closing for the season. Jordan reassures Bryce that everything will be fine and they can just go indoors, whatever. Um, Bryce was scared because she was not one to be uh, surrounded by so many people in such a uh, condensed place. Um, this restaurant had so little seating, um, as with all of their market supplies inside and seldom tables, Bryce knew that it would be e even harder to get a table. Like the uh, catalyst. Like the catalyst. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you that this business has always been hopping in the summer, so uh, most of you uh, have, have to wait even when there is service outside. Um, so Bryce begins to lose sleep over this because this is where Jordan and her had their first date. Um, but, and she didn't uh, want this place to be their last place. Um, so Bryce had never been in love before and never had anyone in her life that supported her emotionally as much as Jordan. Um, many times Jordan would get annoyed from Bryce for acting like a worry wart. Uh, that, sorry for the language. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good use to word, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what, worry yeah. wart, right? Yeah. Okay, so anyways, uh, the, it was the last brunch and uh, Bryce was wearing a nice sundress. It was very sexy, but it was very uh, classy, summery dress, you know, you know, it was like flowers, it was bright yellows and blues. Um, Jordan was wearing overalls <laughs> and uh, was on break. Um, they were having brunch on the last day outdoor services. Bryce was just so nervous as their first, just like their first date. Jordan was finishing, uh, fishing for uh, responses and getting whimpers and evasive responses. Jordan calls out Bryce and asks if Bryce is trying to break up with her. And much to Bryce's surprise, she was so shocked that she forgot how to speak. Jordan, being a very impulsive person, decides to get up and walk away on Bryce, never to return again. Wow. Um, for Bryce, she never thought that by doing nothing that she would lose the only person in her life that has paid any mind at all because she was so afraid of losing her. More of the story is, for those of you not willing to overcome your anxieties, you'll be stuck wondering what you should have done rather than owing what you did. Hmm. So, the end, and I'm finishing the season of Tales from the Weekend. Wow, that was good, Scott. Yeah. That was really heartbreaking at the end. It is very hard. I felt really bad for her. But like with any transition of time, you know, like, yeah, you know, it, it's basically like summer loving. Summer loving happens so fast. <laughs> it's like that song. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't remember. I, I, really, I just blanked on the song. I wanted to like add to it, but I can't. I, I know. I just can't think. Summer loving happens so fast. <laughs> Something like that. So yeah, that was uh, the last Tales of the Weekend for a while. Um, I uh, that was good. I really, I've really been enjoying your creative outlet <laughs> from these Tales of the Weekends. I also, since Scott and I, you know, obviously know each other and are friends, some of your Tales from the Weekends I've noticed are from inspired from people around town and happenings around town. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, subconsciously. Yeah. But I consciously see it. Because <laughs> I know things. <laughs> but either way, how else do you get inspiration? You know, you gather inspiration from your surroundings yeah. and the people that you surround yourself with. So it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your surroundings, um, <laughs> how is the uh, Orange Street of construction doing? Because I was uh, I was going to do a road you know, report. I was just wondering because uh, everyone says that all this construction is going on. Uh, Orange, I mean, um, Higgins Bridge, you see that sign's like, oh, watch out for delays. Nothing happening. So, see so happening. as far as the Orange Street construction working on the roundabout, what they're doing is working on the highway right now. Uh, so I think what they're doing is widening the um, the express ramp, the ramp that, to like get off the highway. Because I only see construction guys just up there. I don't see any actually on the street. 
Cool. So I think they're starting up there. So it's, it's a slow process. Everything is still the same, but there are no delays as far as that area over there. But downtown, we have those curb and sidewalk installations, uh, and that's what's causing delays. And so that's happening, and that is really confusing. Yeah, and um, I'm not sure. It, it, it might. Um, they don't necessarily say if it's going to continue on and through the homecoming parade, because the homecoming parade is this Saturday, and all these homecoming events are happening all week. The lighting mm -hmm. of the M, yeah. all these uh, alumni gathering together. Even mm -hmm. my dad is going to be meeting up with his uh, uh, old fraternity brothers, a Frat fraternity brothers. that has not existed in like 20 years in wow. Missoula. Wow. It, it like disbanded like oh, a long time in ago. In Missoula though? Yeah. Or nationally? Their, their chapter. Their, their chapter, chapter in Missoula. Missoula disbanded but nationally. I don't know how long around. it's been since they actually were but it's mm -hmm. it's the first time in many years that they're actually trying to get together. Mm -hmm. It's just, I guess one of them is like, let's gather people and there's like, yeah sure, it's been uh, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. I guess we can <laughs> try something. Yeah. That's cool. That's neat. Well, that'll be interesting. So stay tuned yeah. for that. <laughs> oh, so also this weekend, of course, I, I do want to jump in. Um, I, I got a chance to see uh, Ken or I miss oh, and the good. group of um, folks over at um, um, Union Anna, Club. Uh -huh. They were doing a spaghetti fundraiser for Kenner Imus, who's been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. It's at stage four, I believe. Wow. Um, yeah, so they're looking for anybody who wanted donations. And they have a GoFund site and um, a band called um, Mel and Cole. And this is the um, a band that was playing. Uh, it was a, it's a nice, it's a teen band mm -hmm. from Missoula, and I think they sound pretty good. Cool. So I'm going to show you that, and then when we come back, we'll have Noah with events, and then later on the show, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have sports and of course musical notes with ASAP. So yep. stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. Welcome everybody to um, the Kenorimus Trust fundraiser. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Andrea Harcel. I'm one of the organizers. Um, we've got a spaghetti feed going on tonight from four to seven, and then we've got a silent auction happening over here in the corner, so feel free to take a look at what we have, and um, that will be closing at 8 p.m. Um, you guys ready? All right. Uh, these are, uh, this is my daughter, Leah, <laughs> and uh, she goes to Hellgate. Liam goes to Hellgate, and the other two here, these guys go to Big Sky. The band is called Mel and Cole, and here you go. Hey guys, we are back and I've got some community events happening for your Monday. And so today what I noticed was that today was just pretty chill for events for Monday. All the like normal things that looks like, you know, we're done with Montana Book Festival, we're done walk with Walk and Roll Week. All those activities classes that Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center has put on is now in full swing. So you guys should be in those or not. So we just have our normal regular Missoula things that happen every Monday. Uh, first, we've got family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics at 930. This is an open gym for ages walking to 12 years. And then we've got preschool playgroup over at Roots Acro Sports Center. This is an open gym for ages um, walking to five years. So it's preschoolers. They set up different activities and stations around the gym, and the parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. The Learning Center at Red Willow, we've got Yoga for Wellness. This starts at noon. It's uh, $40 for four weeks or just $12 to drop in. It's an ongoing class, so you can come anytime. Moscow Monday is at, Mos is at Montgomery Distillery that also starts at noon. So it's where they give a dollar back from, the, from each drink. They give a dollar back to the nonprofit of the night. The nonprofit they usually choose that has to be aligned with either something with like environmental stewardships, having to do with children, or helping um, the homeless and the community. The Senior Center has got their Beginner's Brush Up Bridge Group that starts at 1 o'clock. Duplicate Bridge is at Garden City Bridge Club that's also at 1 o'clock. 
And then at the University of Montana, we've got our first homecoming um, event. It's the Homecoming 2016 Hello Walk that starts at 1 o'clock. So what it is, is that it's a bunch of students that'll go, and alumni that'll go, and they'll just write hello in different languages on the sidewalk. So uh, you, they want to meet in front of Turner Hall. They'll provide all of the brushes and paints and sidewalk chalk and everything that you can use. And then you pretty much just go all over campus and write hello in different um, languages or whatever language you speak. It's called the Hello Walk. The Missoula Public Library has got their computer electronics in their makerspace. It starts at 3 o'clock um, and it goes until 6. So you can work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. And then we have word play at the base of the warehouse mall that's at 4 o'clock. That is a word games, poetic, exp poetic exploration, free writing, and expansion. And we've got our Grateful Dead. This is the Raising the Dead live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. That's usually from 5 to 7. It's at the Top Hat Lounge. But as tonight is a presidential debate, so that might end a little bit early. We have open mic night at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. And then internet searching class at the public library also at 6. Call 721-2665 to sign up and register for that. And then there is a pumpkins on parade, uh, kind of like an art class. This is going to be out at Frenchtown High School from 6 to 9. You're going to make and take a scrappy pumpkin table runner. It's an easy, easy, cute little fall project. It's only $29. There's a lecture at the university in the UC Theater at 6 o'clock. It's called North Korea and Northeast Asia. Is peace possible? Um, so the U.S. Ambassador Sung Kim, which is a, the State Department's special representative for North Korea policy, will discuss the future prospects for stability and security in Northeast Asia in light of North Korea's fifth nuclear test that happened earlier this month. And he is also about to become um, the State Department's top, he's going to become the next U.S. ambassador to the Philippines. So his role with the North Korea will end and he's going to go over the U.S. Philippines. Or the Philippines. At Martha Jane's Uptown Dance, we've got a salsa dance class that starts at 6 o'clock. Um, it's $75 or check or $70 in cash, and that's from 6 to uh, 7.15 at night. And I think it's like six or seven weeks, something like that. But if you guys are interested in that, you can just give 406-640-3262 a call to sign up for that one. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, we've got our presidential deba debate watch party that's at 6.30 at the Top Hat Lounge. Why are you laughing, Scott? So it starts at 7 o'clock because it starts at 9 o'clock in the East Coast, so it's 7 o'clock our time. And then that'll last for about an hour and a half, so they'll have that free and live for you guys at the Top Hat Lounge. And then my last event for Monday is Dwight Yoakam is coming to the Wilma Theater at 7 o'clock. He'll be at 7 o'clock tonight, and if you guys don't know who he is, he is a country rock legend that's been in lots of movies, has won lots of Grammys, and has put out several albums that have platinum and gold status. Yeah. So he's quite a legend, and he will be here tonight starting at 7 o'clock. I saw him setting up um, all week long. I saw their, the, his big band with his big head. Do you? And then there was another band that was filling his ego as well. Okay. And other stuff as well. I saw a huge. There's so much stuff. I saw a huge tour bus outside the Top Hat Lounge yesterday, and I was oh, like, "Oh, they're, they're and outside I was like, the Adams Center." Who is that? No, they're at the. They're they are. At, they're at the Wilma. Oh, okay. Cause yeah. I saw. I saw their like van and truck Dirk outside. Dirk Bentley. Dirk's. Dirk Bentley was at the Adams Center right. on Saturday. So that happened on Saturday. But, Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. But Dwight Yoakam, I would imagine that maybe he was here yesterday because I saw a huge tour bus outside of Top Hat that was massive. And I was like, who is that for? No one was playing on Sunday that I could think of. So yeah, it could be them. But who knows? So he'll be here. And uh, he has a, a very impressive resume. Yeah, so that'd yeah, be kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know Dwight Yoko? <laughs> I know exactly who he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll be here tonight. Yeah. But that's what I've got for you guys going on on Monday. Now we have musical notes with Asaf Adonai. Well, before I start, um, <clears throat> in case your television audience doesn't know, we lost Arnold Palmer yesterday, the greatest golfer, in my opinion, that ever lived. So I just wanted to give my condolences. And then I wanted to ask you a quick question before I start. Do any of you know the actor Walter Pidgeon and all you ever heard of him? Well, mm -hmm. keep that name in mind because that's going to tie in with my story, Walter Pidgeon. We'll get to him in a second. When I was in my 20s, I thought I was going to be our guest on today's Musical Notes. This is a true story. 
I thought I'd be on a submarine like the Sea View, and I thought I would be an admiral in the Navy. So I went to the recruiting office, and I actually took the three-hour Navy test. And after I got my results, <laughs> the recruiter looked at me with a smile and said, you know, your heart's in the right place, but I think you should consider another line of work. <laughs> I failed that test, that Navy test with flying colors, and I walked out of there so embarrassed Aww. and humble licking my wounds. And also, as you guys know, I have two moms, and my birth mom, she was a big fan of our guest on today's Musical Notes. My mom would watch every movie and television show he ever did. And in the world of Hollywood, our guest did not fail the Navy. Admiral Harriman Nelson in the television series, science fiction drama, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and Moby Dick in 1956. John Richard Basehart, known to the world as Richard Basehart, there he is on the screen. This actor was very, very popular in his time. I know he goes before your time, but as I mentioned, my mom watched everything this man ever did. And to tell you a little bit about Richard Basehart, he was an American actor, and he, he was best known for playing, as I mentioned, Admiral Nelson in Voice at the Bottom of the Sea from 1964 to 1968. And he was also active in cinema, receiving the National Board of Review Awards for his performances in a movie called 14 Hours in 1951. And he got an award for Moby Dick in 56. And he was further nominated for the BAFTA Award for his role in Time Limit in 1957 with the, uh, the directorial debut of actor Carl Malden, The Streets of San Francisco. And we look on the screen, we saw that voice at the bottom of the sea. And here's some more pictures throughout the career of Richard Basehart here. Um, let's see. He's known for his distinctive voice. He also narrated the David Walper documentary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Four Days in November. He also, in 1972, appeared in Dagger of the Mine on a Columbo episode, <clears throat> playing the murder. <laughs> and uh, he and his wife, they were a theatrical team, and they were doing parodies, and they hated each other off screen. And so he wipes her out, and of course, Peter Fox solves the murder. And look how smooth he looks in these pictures here. He just had a way about him in television and film. Now, getting back to Walter Pidgeon, Walter Pidgeon, there's no pictures of him, obviously, but um, he and Richard Basehart had one thing in common. They both played Admiral Nelson. Richard Basehart played Nelson in the television, and Walter Pidgeon played the pilot, the movie, that started the series of Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And in a routine expedition to the North Pole, <laughs> It turns into a race to save mankind because there was an inferno in space that made the Earth catch on fire. That's how the whole series of... There was a lot of series back in the day that yeah. had a routine expedition. <laughs> yeah, routine expedition. expedition. And the Earth caught on fire. And, and uh, Whoops. The, the Ukraine was freaking out and Paris was freaking out. And, of course, Major Nelson saves the day. So <laughs> That's I'm awkward. sorry. Um, nice. I should say uh, Richard Basar's character. So Nice. You know, he'll always be remembered for playing the Admiral on Voice at the Bottom of the Sea, Admiral Nelson. And on that note, I will stop. <laughs> Thank you very much, Asa. <laughs> Asa. Well, it looks like I am running out of time, so yes. I will uh, bid you adieu. And um, I hope you guys have a good morning. Um, we're going to continue events with Noel, but i got to go. My, I have an interview in 10 minutes, and I have to go across town. So <laughs> You better get on that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Have um, a good day, Scott. Yeah, bye. Thanks. All right, you guys, well, we've got some events going on for your Tuesday. Up first, we've got face painting at the Children's Museum of Missoula that starts at 11. And then we have a mindfulness meditation group at the Learning Center at Red Willow that starts at noon. That's tomorrow. Um, and that is an ongoing class. You could drop in any time. It's $40 for four weeks or just 12 bucks to drop in. We have Shooting the Bull Toastmasters in the Alps Boardroom at noon. This is a lively Toastmasters club that will improve your public speaking, improve your leadership skills, and just get you confident out there when speaking in front of large groups. The Alps Boardroom is in the Florence Building. At the Missoula Art Museum, we've got an after school adventure, uh, after school art adventure number one that's at, starts at 345, goes until 515. It's from on Tuesdays from September 13th through October 18th, so it's already in full swing. 
Um, and so it's 50 bucks or $45 if you're a member for ages 7 to 11. And they just do art activities, art appreciation, art history. Yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center at Red Willow. It starts at 4 o'clock. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their care caregivers to help with PTSD, sleeping problems, and anxiety. We have Falfs in the, Falf in the Parks. It starts at 5 o'clock, and it's going to be at Fort Missoula tomorrow. Um, and it's a 9 to 12 whole Falf disc. Falf course. Yeah. <laughs> we have our Tuesday night markets at the Missoula Farmer's Market over the Red X's. It starts at 5.30 tomorrow. And then we have yoga in the park, so it's at 6, that's going to be at McCormick Park tomorrow. Picking Circle is at the Top Out Lounge, that's also at 6 o'clock from 6 to 8. Every Tuesday, bluegrass-oriented musicians can go to the Top Out Lounge and jam out in their raised seating above, right in front of the sound booth. There's traditional Irish music at Imagination Brewing Company with Crashers and Friends, that's going to be at 6 o'clock. And then we have a community creative writing workshop that's at the Missoula Public Library. That's also at six. This is an open drop-in create uh, environment. Work is you know focused on the creative writing workshop process. You can just stop in any time. And then at the Missoula Public Library, uh, as part of the big read, they're going to have Christy Hager, which is a local painter and photographer, who will present the art and adventures of George Catlin and Carl Bodmer on the Upper Missouri River from 1832 to 1834. So the big read has got a bunch of Native American art and literature. And so we're learning about that, which I have been since last week as well as this week. The big read was in, um, was in cahoots with the Montana Book Festival. <laughs> um, yeah, and so this uh, lecture will emphasize and document the faces, ceremonies, artifacts, and daily lives and surrounding landscapes and the indigenous people in this remarkable time. So it'll be from art from 1832 to 1834. That'll be at the public library, large meeting room from 6 to 8.30 tomorrow. We have got a Flavors of the World, a good food store cooking class. It's called Mexican Street Food. Starts at 6.30. It's only cost is $25. And we've got System Check at the Missoula Public Library. That's also at 6.30. This is an official gamers club for ages 19 and under. They have board games, card games, video games, everything that you could want. And then at the Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a class uh, for parents, but about children. It starts at 6.30, and it's called Smoother Mornings. And so what it is, it's pretty much just a class to help you, help your kids to have more easier mornings and easier times getting out of the house so that everyone is excited for school and dressed and on time and getting out of the house. I remember how difficult it was for me to get out of the house, and so I'm sure that this really helps parents. Yeah. So that is at Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6.30 to 8.30. Oh, no, no. It's at the Lewis and Clark Elementary School. I apologize. Put on by the Lifelong Learning Center at the Dick at uh, Lewis and Clark Elementary School, 6.30 to 8.30, and it's free. At Martha Jane's Uptown Dance, we've got a country rodeo swing class, the country jitterbug that starts at 6.30. Um, it's $55.00 check or 50 bucks in cash couples are welcome and singles are welcome too but she asks that you call first to make sure that there will be a single person for you yeah. we have our african dance class at the missoula senior center at seven o'clock um that's 35 dollars for four classes and then we have Ula at the Barn Movement Studio at 7. And we have a new Hatha Yoga class that is at 7 o'clock. That's at the Yoga Fitness Center. Um, and it's only from 7 to 8.15. I think it's only 10 bucks to drop in. And then we've got a lecture at the University of Montana tomorrow, 7 o'clock on Tuesday. It's called Climate Change, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Uh, Dr. William Schleisinger will be... Um, is will be the Montana Institute on the Ecosystems Distinguished Visiting Lecture this fall. So he is uh, he is going to be in Montana at the university giving lectures, and he has written a lot of books about the ecosystem and about the environment. So he's coming to talk about climate change. He'll be at the university tomorrow at seven. And then my last event is Bomb Shelter Bingo. That's going to be at the VFW at ten o'clock. It's only a dollar a card, and uh, yeah, bingo is really fun. So that'll be at the VFW. So that's what I've got going on for you guys today. Um, as always, you can check out MissoulaEvents.net. You can check out the University of Montana website, and you can also check out the Independent and the Missoulian for more events. But that's what I've got going on for you guys. We're going to go to a couple PSAs, and up next we've got our sports segment with uh, Kempson Cross and Cole Johnson. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. 
Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people, manipulated our practices, and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Time for sports on Wake Up Missoula. I'm Cole Johnson and this... I'm Captain Cross. And we are the Spartan Live football announcers for the Missoula Sentinel football team. And Sentinel with a big time road win over um, Billings Skyview uh, this past Friday night, 25 to 20. It was a game in which they were behind in the fourth quarter. They were down 20 to 13, but they scored 12 unanswered points in the fourth to win that game. They go to three and two in the conference, um, a game in which you know maybe they were supposed to win handedly, but they, come, they came from behind. It's their second road win in a row. They're three and two, as I mentioned, Kempson. Uh, you look at the resiliency of this team, uh, Caden Messer with two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Um, what do you have to say um, just for this team being able to come back the way that they did? Well, Elias DeWaters was a key in that as well because he rushed for 160 yards, uh, averaging almost 27 yards per touch, which is, which is a lot. Um, and Mitch Roberts, though, was, even though he was just 9 of 18 passing, just had uh, – less than 150 yards he had two fourth quarter touchdown tosses like you said to Caden Messer <clears throat> and that was huge for Sentinel to be able to come back in that game and win a game that they were supposed to win on the road Billing Skyview is a team that's struggling a bit right now Sentinel's a team with playoff aspirations Sentinel should go on the road and win that game and you'll take a comeback road victory over a, uh, over a road loss any day or a loss of any kind any day, for sure. So, um, yeah, Mitch Roberts, Elias DeWaters were huge. Connor Crawford also had a rushing touchdown, I believe. And even though they had a couple of miscues, they missed a couple uh, point after attempts. They uh, had a fumble that led to uh, Billing Skyview. Billing Skyview, after going down 13 nothing, credit them too, because they were able to show, uh, show that they had some, uh, they were resilient as well, as far as they, um, were down 13 nothing came back and were actually leading 20 to 13 in the second half and so Sentinel though was able to uh, stand tall and be able to uh, show poise down the stretch in that game and uh, Brian Jakubowski actually made the game clinching interception after a couple of penalties uh, on Skyview's final drive uh, put them in position to possibly win that game and so Sentinel just coming through on the road, uh, a, a great team win after uh, a couple mistakes. Uh, let Skyview take the lead once again, like we talked about. And then, um, yeah, they were able to emerge victorious, which is huge because, again, puts them to three and two. And it, it keeps them right on pace uh, for in the playoff race. Yeah, no doubt about it. It was a big road win. Their second in a row, DeWaters had 160 yards rushing in that game. He had a 34-yard touchdown. Um, you know, the depth on the team has been awesome. You know, you had the Crawford and uh, DeWaters one-two punch there running the football. A couple missed extra points in the game. Um, some things you have to clean up in order to get ready for the game against Glacier. And speaking of uh, Glacier High, uh, they're undefeated 5-0. and It's their homecoming game for Missoula Sentinel um, this Friday night. Uh, they got a chance to, you know, make a playoff push. Potentially, who knows, catapult themselves into that number four spot and, you know, potentially get a home game if they do make the playoffs. So what do you see in that game? How do you think Missoula Sentinel is going to pull off the upset 
this Friday night. Yeah, well, when I look at that game, I see a Kalispell Glacier team that's 5-0, and and the reason they're 5-0 and is because they are a legitimate state title contender. Billing Senior is the class of AA football in the state of Montana. Kalispell Glacier, though, is making a name for themselves, and they're right there with them at 5-0 and halfway through the season. And at the halfway mark, you kind of start getting a feel for who you are as a team. And Kalispell Glacier seems to be legit. They've dealt with some adversity. They had a home game against Great Falls where Great Falls, who is a team that's 1-4 and four now, was had Glacier on the ropes for at least the first half of that game. And so then they were able to come, uh, Glacier was able to rally in that game. And another important thing is Glacier is basically coming off a bye week because they had Hellgate on the schedule last week and Hellgate forfeited their season. They're not playing varsity football because of a lack of manpower. So um, that's huge to look at. Glacier is just always is a perennial playoff team. And <clears throat> we expected uh, Sentinel to struggle on the road against Helena, who's a perennial playoff team, especially after we saw Big Sky uh, kind of have their way in the run game in, in the rivalry game in Missoula. And so, but uh, Sentinel was able to stand tall in that game. And then now they have two wins in a row on the road, which gives you momentum coming back home. It's homecoming. It's a huge game. To date, it's the biggest game um, this this uh, season in Missoula because Sentinel, again, trying to make that playoff push. Kalispell Glacier, it's pretty solidly uh, a playoff team, barring a catastrophe, obviously. But uh, so it's going to be a great measuring stick, if nothing else. I think if, if Sentinel can get off to a good start and just make sure that they get their running game going and then Mitch Roberts can have some of the play action game and, some, uh, and also um, get his legs involved as well, I think that's when they're at their best. The defense just has to continue to be opportunistic um, and uh, create more opportunities because against a really good team like Glacier, you have to not only maximize the opportunities that you get but you also have to create some opportunities of your own. And so that's going to be huge for Sentinel to do on this Friday night in a huge game for homecoming. And um, obviously, if if possible, uh, I think that Sentinel head coach Dane Oliver, the players, the staff, all the supporters would, would prefer you to be in the stands. Yeah. Um, but if you can't make it, then we'll have it for you on Spartan Life. Yeah, this is a big game indeed, for sure. It's homecoming for the Spartans. Going to the standings real quick, Billings Sr. is 5-0 along with Glacier who's also 5-0. Billings West and Bozeman are 4-1. Missoula Big Sky, they lost to Billings West last Friday. That dropped them down to 3-2. Helena is 3-2 and, and Missoula Sentinel is 3-2 on the year right now. They're sitting in sixth place. So, looking forward, Friday night, we're going to be doing the game out at Missoula County Stadium on the campus of Big Sky High School. You can catch it on MCAT. Uh, just click on the uh, high school sports link uh, and we are the Spartan Live uh, broadcasters for that game. Uh, for um, Wake Up Missoula, I'm Cole Johnson. I'm Kempson Cross. Thanks for watching. Only you can prevent wildfires. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Sergeant Gray.
That was an art clip, and you can catch that at the Clay Studio of, Mizzou, of Montana. The Clay Studio is located over on um, on the west side. So if you take kind of take Burns Street and you get off of Phillip Street, it's over located over in that area. But as you guys see, it's just Asaph and I now because Scott had to take off and do an interview over at KPEX. Um, and so I don't know if we mentioned this, but Arnold Palmer just died. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, and so he died yesterday at the age of 80-something, and he was a golf legend, as well as made some really great tea and lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty much the only announcements. I don't think that I've got anything else. You know, it's a nice, short, easy Monday show for you. Uh, those are all the announcements, all the segments I have got. May I Asa? say something real quick? Yeah, of course. About getting back to Walter Pigeon. Mm -hmm. He was born in 1897, so he was a popular movie star in his time. Your audience can look him up. But like with those talking films and so on, it was tough for a lot of them to make the transition when television came out. And in his case, he was able to sing, so he survived all that. And when he got into television and played Major, uh, you know, Admiral Nelson in the movie version, it just catapulted him again. And so, where did he get his start? Well, was that movies case, yeah, or singing? Yeah, he just singing? did movies like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh gosh, um, Mrs. Miniver. You probably never heard of that. These are movies that go way back. The Forbidden Planet. And nice. so on. Nice. But yeah, he made a transition. Uh huh. And both of these actors, Walter Pidgeon and Richard Basehart, will always be remembered for both playing Major, the uh, Admiral Nelson. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they both played the same character. Just Pidgeon did the movie version, and Basehart did the television version. Huh. And then, do you like the movie version or the television version better? I like the television version better, but the movie version is kind of interesting because it started the whole thing. You know, I mentioned earlier the Earth caught on fire, the whole yeah. planet was burning up. Yeah. <laughs> Walter Pigeon saves the day. <laughs> Good old Walter. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, thanks, Asap. Anything sure. else to announce? No, that's it. Yeah, I think I think that's it for me too. But if you guys want to find out more information about MCAT, you can check us out on our social media or more information about Wake Up Missoula. You can catch us up us on our website. Wake wakeupmissoula.wakes.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can like us on Facebook. You can catch us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can find us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information just check us out on MCAT.org. But that's all Asaf and I have for you guys today for your Monday morning. So for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's Asaf Adonai and we'll see you guys all on Wednesday. <laughs>